I'm Dr. Kim from Seoul, Korea. Uh, it's not easy to say uh, good morning because it's time to get a sleep in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd like to talk my presentation, Endoscopic Experience post theory Approach. Yes, my disclosure. Just wait a moment. My real disclosure is look from the Bible. Another closure disclosure is the look from the Star Wars. If you search the articles about the endoscope lumbar discectomies, there are more than 300 articles. Nearly all among the articles, the nearly 30% of articles are from South Korea and many doctors. In the cervical spine, <clears throat> unfortunately, the only, only 31, there is a today morning data. So sorry for that my talks today is actually based on the limited evidence and my personal and private opinion and experience. <clears throat> it is this is contents today in cervical MIS, posterior and anterior, including tubular surgery and endoscope. And if I, if I have enough time, I'd like to talk the cutting edge technology about the endoscope of cervical spine. I remember the Professor Richard Fessler, yeah. <laughs> he described the, his comments, we may be in the early phase in concept shift published in 2002 in the neurosurgery. But I'd like to say that uh, we are already stand on the upward trend phase from the early phase. So, but uh, if Luke Skywalker is not ready to use the razor sword, he may expose to lose his arms like that. And if Dr. Luke is not ready to use the endoscopic weapons, razor and drill, he may injure the spinal nerves like this. Don't be scared. It's just a training course of color of lab. If you wanna do, uh, see the how, how, how to manage it, I'd like to show you and teach you in the color of lab today. The first one is the anterior PCD before, <coughs> sorry, talking about the posterior endoscope surgery. And uh, this is my case, uh, 50, 52 uh, severe arm pain along the C8 dermatome. tome. So I did the anterior PCD and post MR, and you can see the very tiny skin incision in the cervical patient's cervical uh, spine, uh, well restored alignment. But uh, this is uh, not popular technique. <clears throat> so uh, I'd like to review the articles about the anterior PCD. Almost all the papers of the uh, anterior PCD are published by the two surgeons, mostly two surgeons, Professor uh, Ree, my, one of my best friends, and the, the other doctors, the Professor An, they published the long-term outcomes. So a few, just a few days ago, I uh, talked with them about the opinion and the conclusion about the anterior PCD. So first comment is on the Professor Han, because uh, this anterior PCD is still an uh, effective treatment tool, but the indication is the problem, so narrow indication, because this is the mismatching, uh, because the limitation is so uh, limited. Indication is so limited. So uh, he recommended, he talked to me, I cannot recommend the PCD if the, one of his colleagues uh, have suffered to, from the uh, cervical spinal problem. So another comment is from the Professor Ree. Even though this is very fascinating, almost non and minimal invasive surgery techniques, because, but the, there are still a skeptical and the photo comments about the anterior PCD because it is transdiscal 
procedures and subsequent this kind laws and the degeneration occurs. That is why I uh, moved from the anterior to posterior PCD techniques. So, next. Before starting the posterior approach, we have to review the morphometric structure of the nerve root around the lateral mass and foramen width and height of foramen and pedicle and length and the angles of the nerve root. I agree the, uh, you know, the four, four kind of the retractor system we can use from the open and semi-tubular retractors and the tube and, <clears throat> and endoscope. Uh, we can call it the tough and elegant and sometimes smart and strong and sometimes sexy. Endoscope. We can also use the CO2 razor and the holomeric razor if we want to do during the procedures. Uh, just compare the this kind of open and semi-tubular tube and the endoscope systems. Even though this, uh, they have the same surgical goal, but the different tissue damage are problem. So I'd like to compare simultaneously between the tubular foraminotomy and discectomy and endoscope foraminotomy and discectomy. So you can see the little bit difference of skin in season and the different condition of endoscope and the <clears throat> microscope guidance. Uh, for endoscopic surgery, we need the very specialized the, uh, drill system and the radio frequency etc. And the, we can see the post of MRI and CD scan and interrupt the view demonstrating lobster disc from the axillary portion. Now I'd like to move the posterior PCD. The indication is broadened because if using this approach we can treat the not only disc herniation but terminal and stenosis or so. I have used the secondary endoscope and recently I used the third generator endoscope, bigger one for foraminal and central spinal stenosis. So let me talk, uh, let me review the scope, diameter and length and you can see the different size of the uh, uh, different size of diameter and uh, companies a different joint mix and the ratio of etc. I have the used this vertebral stenosis since 2015 and this third generation endoscope. Uh, this is surgical basic uh, techniques for the endoscope posterior. First one, you know the position from reverse random blur and this head fixation is not always necessary. Just up to surgeon's preference and operation room setting, the approach from the skin in season, very, very important. Okay, confirm the V point interoperatively and the others. And this red circle is the margin uh, which we can drill out the endoscope drill. And we can also use the table mounted arm. Uh, this is very essential tool for protection your shoulders a surgeon is shorter because uh, surgical time is sometimes longer than the open surgery. So long lasting surgery, uh, surgeons can feel fatigue and some ache in the left arm, left shoulder. Drilling is very important and we can use the straight type burr and the tick control burr and the knowing the orientation and the, under the endoscope view and the, using the, this kind of specialized articulated bird is very essential tool for the pro preserving the facet joint as much as possible. Uh, this kind of, this procedure is always done the underlying the saline irrigation. Uh, you can see the uh, surgical field, various laminar, various interlaminar space and drilling step by step and endosc endosc endoscopic keratin and finally, we can expose the nerve root. And most, one of the most uh, important 
uh, advantage is patient get a so fast return to daily activity. So this is case illustration, PCD posterior. Patient had a history of compactomy, C5, and the, a few years later, patient uh, suffered from the C7, 6, 7 left side prominent stenosis like this. So what kind of surgical procedures you can consider? Anterior revision, posterior long and big surgery. I did a just uh, endoscopic surgery for the just unlooping of the posterior uh, C6-7 uh, junctional problem from a lesion. This is uh, the endoscope view. You can see the laminar and the interlaminar space. So first one is the exposing the laminar and then we can start our drilling uh, from the uh, laminar, cranial side and caudal side. This is better specialized, the shaver systems protecting the uh, surrounding neural tissues. And the modeling is done the, for the foraminotomy and to expose the, expose the nerve root. And then you can see the uh, very thin layer ligament of labor and foramen ligament. Because foramen ligament in cervical spine is very narrow, we, you have to keep attention not to damage, not to penetrate the foramen ligament. And then you can see the uh, nerve root here, beneath here, and then uh, step by step from anatomy using this kind of the uh, endos endoscopic keratin punch. And then uh, if it is not enough to expose the, the nerve root, you can use the more drilling and from anatomy procedures like that. And then you can see the nerve root. And if you have troublesome because some uh, pure bleeding, you can use you can use the RF system. You can control the bleeding intraoperatively, and check the where is the pedicle, and then surgery is finished. This is a margin of the drill. Uh, what about the size between the tube and the endoscope? We can minimize the tube size and skin incision on the tube size. Uh, what do you think about it? Does this size matter between the two procedures? Uh, let me explain the, my opinion. This is uh, my patient. I did endoscope procedures 2015. One year later, I checked the MRI. You can see the, there is a little, little change of the uh, muscle fibers, well-preserved muscle fibers. And uh, the other cases, I did the tubular foraminotomy and discectomy procedures. Six months later, there are still the moderate uh, atrophic uh, changes of muscle fibers. There is a difference. So I think the, yes, it may do matter. That is why I'm uh, doing the ongoing randomized control study between the tube and endoscope procedures. So this is my uh, probably opinion between the tube and endoscope. Yes, we are family with the tubular surgery, and uh, we can be also uh, family with endoscopic surgery because the familiar, the surgical field is so familiar. Uh, we can get uh, enough uh, decompression using the bigger size endoscope, stenosiscope, and rich muscle damage. And the learning curve is not so uh, steep uh, compared with the uh, lumbar cases. Uh, based on my private uh, opinion, uh, there is a consideration, consideration point and issues, evidence, scan, safety and learning curve, operation time, infection rate, actual pain, and rapid functional recovery, and etc. If you have learned the endoscopic procedures, if you are familiar with the endoscopic procedures, you can erase this kind of the uh, point, and then the, the total score uh, between the tube and endoscope is very similar. So this is my uh, personal recommendation to every surgeon. Start from the open surgery and the move to tubular surgery and then if you are ready, endoscope is better for the patient. Of course, 
As I uh, talked in the beginning in the presentation, there, there is only 31 articles published in the PubMed. So what about the evidence? Yes, the evidence is still limited. So I could not find any evidence among the four uh, surgical systems. That is why I'd like to find the evidence in my loving movie. Movie. Do you like this? Rarorand. Different colors, stars, and preference. Yes, uh, I think. So. Just as four beautiful actors in La La Land, four different discectomy tools in spine surgery. Do you agree? This is take home message for you. Just imagine the sounds on your ears. As if your favorite woman's style is different from the others, my favorite surgical procedures could be different from yours. I think the, like all women should be respected, all surgical procedures should be respected. Why? Yes, this is the platform for the new start for evidence-based medicine. This is take home message for myself. So blessed is the surgeon who does not condemn himself by getting more evidence. This is my private opinion. I'd like to introduce the uh, new trial from Korea by portal endoscope. This is my case, very severe foramenal stenosis in two level, multi-level problem, five, six, and six, seven. And we try the, we treat, I treat the patient by using the bipolar endoscope if we have time, I'd like to introduce him later in detail. Anyway, this is another uh, trial of the 3D microendoscope decompression using the 4D subical mild PESI. Yes, you can see the very small size, micro size is 3D camera. And this is published and presented. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs>